Yo, what is going on guys, it's Cryptic TNG and I'm back with a brand new video. This time is part two of the which is the fastest car in the rain. And um, yeah, this time we're gonna be focusing on the two Bentleys, the BMW and the Jaguar. And on the screen at the moment, you can see the times so far achieved by the first four cars I tried. So we're gonna see how close we can get to that doing the same sort of things, just working off of the default wet setup, making basic changes to tire pressures, brake bias, and the ECU components and yeah we're gonna see how close we can get see what times we pull out the bag and hopefully we can get a car a little bit closer to the Aston Martin because at the moment the Aston Martin definitely seemed the uh, quicker car but yeah let's get stuck into part two So we managed a 2 minute 10.7 in the older Bentley and this car is actually is quite stable but the problem is it's got a lot of torque so you end up having to use higher traction control which really does bog the car down and even in the dry I feel as if the uh, traction control on the old Bentley is pretty difficult but we're going to fast forward to the new Bentley and see if we can beat that time and hopefully we can because obviously I feel like this car is probably a better handling car so let's see how this car does and I'll be back at the end of this lap.
So seven tenths quicker with the new Bentley over the old, which is probably what, what I would have liked to have seen from the uh, from the Audi Evo compared to the old one, but wasn't the case. But yeah, um, this car handles quite nicely. But again, same sort of issue with the traction. It just doesn't seem to have just that nimbleness in the wet. But um, moving on swiftly because I really want to get through these cars. I don't want to spend too long on them. We're going to be using the BMW M6, which um, yeah, I have to say just from the initial feeling it felt quite stable but I don't know how that's going to transfer into the lap time so I'll see you guys at the end of this lap. Wow, 2 minute 12.3, really slow compared to the rest of the other cars and um, what I would say about the BMW is because it feels so stable and so comfortable, you really do have to sort of make yourself uncomfortable. You have to lower your, either your EC or your traction because it's so stable but it's, it's so slow and what might be more comfortable to you might be the slower option. So um, yeah, you're going to definitely have to put a decent setup on the M6 to get it to go anywhere in the wet. But uh, moving on to the Jag, which I thought would be quite difficult because it's not the easiest car to drive even in the dry. So um, let's see what this car can do.
2 minute 12.4, just a tenth of the M6, and you have to say the Jag is quite an old car, and I probably did expect um, this sort of time. You can see from the laps I've done, I actually probably could have beat the M6 time, which is kind of crazy, but um, yeah, I kind of expected the Jag to be a little bit slower than the other cars. The other cars, much newer, much more downforce, and um, yeah, I think that we, we, if, you're, if you're in the Jag realistically, you know, it's not a surprise the car's not that fast in the wet, but still wasn't that far off of the M6. But as you can see, the list still consists of the uh, Aston Martin set at the top by quite a way. Um, the old Audi, um, older R8, second place. The only two cars that I managed to get a 209 in. I probably could have got a 209 in the Bentley Continental um, 2018, but just missed out. Um, then you've got the Evo, followed very closely by the old Bentley. Um, the old Aston Martin in sixth place at the moment, and the BMW shockingly almost a second and a half off of uh, the back of the, the Vantage, which is quite an old GT3 car as well, so kind of shocking really. Um, and the ML3 Jag also up very close to the M6, so the M6 definitely looks as if it is slacking in wet weather. Um, definitely the main thing I've taken so much uh, from doing these tests, actually uh, I've learned quite a lot, the most important thing before you work on your setup is get your ECU and your traction control right. That is going to have a massive bearing, even more than your setup, I think. It's going to have a massive bearing on how quick you're able to go because, as I said before, what you might feel comfortable with might just be too slow. If you're not having any wheel spin, if you're not having to catch the back end a little bit, then chances are that the car is too slow. Your ECU may be too high or your traction may be too high. So bear that in mind. But anyway, it's Crypto TNG. Like and subscribe. Hit the notification bell to catch my videos first. Watch out for part three. I'll be bringing out probably by tomorrow. So um, yeah, keep an eye out for that. It's Crypto TNG. Peace.